post fight recap 107 the last of the uh Beckenstein coverage now this was for the super middleweight silver title you know Ezeki Beck Abdul Gar was it Ezeki Beck Abdul Marchar Abdul Garfarov better known as Triple A cuz that's what his shorts say and it's easier we're and you know Triple A we're not talking about the USA towing company but he did take fucking uh Dmitry Shovinov tore his ass out of the ring now, he did everything but knock him out you know did like Dmitry Shadinov. Uh, he beat him better. Chris Eubanks TKO'd him in the twelfth, but he died. He dominated Dmitry from rounds one to twelve. The scorecards are one eighteen to one ten all the way across. Now the reason, not only was this for the WBC silver um, title in the super middleweight division, this was a big big upset as well because you're looking at the rankings right here you know like I said triple uh, a he goes on to 11 and 0 now in the rankings you got the WBC that was for the WBC silver Fedor was number nine he was number six in the IBF and then here is the kicker He's not ranked in the WBO. So like I said, number nine in the WBC, which the title was for. Number six in the IBF. And in the WBA, he was ranked number one. He was the number one contender in the WBA. And he just got his ass clean out by the young AAA Azabek. Now, they said the only thing he didn't do was finish him. It was 12 rounds of domination. Uh, offensive countering him, defensive countering him. Uh, he, used, he used ring journalship on him. He clinched him when he needed to. Uh, fought off against the ropes when he needed to. He went up to up to the head, down to the body, mixed it up through uppercuts. There was nothing he didn't do against Dimitri. Now, what you can argue and what I'm going to say the biggest flaw he has so far, and if we could talk in baseball terms, uh, there was no changeup. It was all one speed, all fastballs. And that's why in the 12th round, you can see Demetrius probably winning, you know, just because the, the pressure, he, he kept pressure on all night. But the fact that Triple A was just throwing fastballs. All, the set, all power shots the same speed. He tired himself out. His, his output, you know, was dropping. But he was still, you know, finding ways to give himself um, those energy breaks. You know, he'll boom, boom, walk around the ring, give himself five seconds here. Then he went to meet the coach. So he, he just walked for five seconds. Then he'll grab him for like another 10. So he was clever enough to find how to get his his breath back get his energy but that's that's the only thing i want to say he needs to do he, he needs to uh again in baseball terms put the change up in his arsenal you know and, and what i mean by change up is you know change the speed of his punches and off the top of my head the best two fighters i know who do that number one is uh lomachenko that do a pity tattoo ta -ta 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 -ta, you know the boom Triple G's pretty good at it. And Bud Crawford's decent at that. Bud Crawford's pretty decent at that. I got the best one off the top of my head is Lomachenko. That dude is great at uh, change ups. You know, ta -ta -ta, boom, ta -ta 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 -ta, boom. You know, L L Triple G does it. He showed it last night when he knocked out um, Vanis. You know, he got him with a good, hard, cracking right hook. He just threw a couple of jabs in there just to uh, get Vanis to make an opening in him. Boom, like I said, and that's what Triple A needs to do as a back. He needs to uh, set up an opening for him by throwing away some softball punches, some throwaway punches. Not every punch has to count. 
you know, because when he is, all his punches, he was very accurate. You know, he was offensive counter, like he was first, defense counter fighting on the back foot. Uh, he allowed Dimitri to walk in and boom, uppercut him, uppercut him to the body. I mean, he, he uppercut him, then hook to the body, then a hook upstairs. So his punches were all over the place. You couldn't tell, you couldn't predict what, what you're going to get hit with. Um, they listen to the corner. Even though I can't understand their language, I could understand, you know, the way uh, the, the motions of the, the coach, you know, he'd be like, hey, do, you know, do, do this, you know, and boom, he will do it. Even when they did break the little action, and you could be like, here, look over to the side real fast, and the coach would be like, <laughs> and sure enough, soon he walks back in the ring, bow, you know. So soon the, soon the referee goes, okay, fight again. He had do exactly what his coach was telling him from the outside corner in those five seconds of just looking over. So very uh, intelligent. Uh, willing to learn, willing to listen is going to take him a far spot. Like I said, Triple Triple A, Azabek Adugarov, uh, he single handedly just demolished, well, obviously single handedly, but he just easy work of a, a number one contender in the WBA. Easy work, 12 rounds domination, number nine in the WBO, number six in the IBF. Like I said, it was for the WBC super middleweight silver title. So we're, we're going to see where that puts him in the rankings. It's going to, like I said, right now I was pushing Caleb Plant as a nice super middleweight this year. This guy is coming up quick. He's going to come up quick. He's, like, these you Beckin stains, they don't they don't play around. <laughs> they do not play around. They, they they got the skills. They they got the power. They, it seems like they got a great coach. A great team in their corner, so that they're they're going to be rec- they're going to be a force in probably like the next two three years the max. It, it's going you, you're going to hear these names. You're going to hear these names. This is a double RT boxing. I'm your host, Mr. A. Thank you for tuning in.